distress. Today I will start chapter 5 of social studies of class 5. Let us start the chapter. Imagine a school without any fixed rules. There would be no punctuality and anyone would come or leave whenever they want. Would you like school then? No, you would not. And this is why we need rules. We follow rules in school, at home, on the road, in a restaurant and even in movie theatres. An absence of rules causes confusion and chaos. Therefore, it is important that a country has rules too so that law and order is maintained. India was ruled by the British till it gained independence on 15th August 1947. Before the arrival of the British, India comprised, sorry, India com comprised a group of princely states that were governed by kings or chiefs. There was no unity and each ruler followed a different set of rules. The British imposed certain rules on the Indians when they came to India. Indians had norms in matters related to their own country and were forced to follow these rules. As the situation in India deteriorated, protests against the British rule started to erupt all over the country. Some of these protests were violent. However, under the leadership of Mahatma Gandhi, a nonviolent movement for independence began in India. The struggle to freedom was long and different. Next topic, framing of the Indian constitution. How the Indian constitution has been framed, we will discuss on that paragraph. See, after gaining independence from the British, the Indian leaders realized that a definite set of rules and regulations were needed to govern a huge country like India. These rules are written in a document known as the Constitution. The Constitution clearly lists the powers of the government and the rights of the citizens of India. It is the supreme law of India. In 1946, the Constituent Assembly was established to frame the Constitution of India. It was headed by Dr. B. R. Ambedkar. The Constitution was written keeping in mind the diversity of India. It took more than three years to complete the drafting of the Constitution, and every point mentioned in this document was discussed and debated by the members of the Constituent Assembly. The Constitution was first adopted on 26 November 1949 and came into effect on 26 January 1950. It was an important and a proud moment for India. Therefore, every year, 26 January is celebrated as Republic Day. Our next topic is Nature of the Indian Constitution. India is a vast country with 29 states and 7 union territories. To run such a big country, a system of government called parliamentary democracy has been adopted, which means there is a central government for the entire country and state governments for each state. The central government looks after matters such as defense and foreign policy. The state government looks after the law and order and the internal issues of the states. The central and the state governments work together to ensure the well-being of the citizens of India. Our next topic is need for constitution. All republics, like India, have a set of rules or principles that have to be followed by every citizen. These rules also help in governing the country. When India attained freedom, it was facing many socio-economic issues. Many people were uneducated and they were divided by the caste system. Equality among the people could be achieved only by making it a law so that everybody would get the same opportunities and benefits. The laws written in our constitution are based on the values of justice and equality. Thus, the rules in the constitution apply to every citizen. No citizen can be placed above the law. If someone feels that they have been discriminated against or treated unfairly, they can use the constitution to protect their right to equality. While the constitution gives rights to the citizens and powers to the government, it also withdraws the rights and powers in certain situations. Our next topic is the preamble. The Indian constitution begins with a preamble which is an introductory statement that explains the principles on which the constitution of India is based. To understand the preamble, let us look at some of the words mentioned in it. First point, we, the people of India, means all the people of India speaking different languages, following different religions, rich or poor, or staying in different regions. Point number two, sovereign means free from the control of any foreign power. The citizens of India elect a government that makes the laws. Next point, socialist means that everyone has an equal right to own a share of the country's wealth. Next point, secular means equal freedom and respect for all the religions. Next point, democratic means a government which is formed by the leaders elected by the people. Next point, republic means that the head of the country is an elected person and does not come to power through any other process than elections. Next point, 
Justice means all citizens, irrespective of their background, should be treated fairly, honestly, and equally, and have the right to vote in their elections. Next point, liberty means the freedom to speak and write what one thinks, freedom to choose one's religion, freedom to travel anywhere, and freedom to live in one's place of choice. Next point, equality means every Indian citizen has a right to equal opportunities irrespective of their religion, economic status, sex, or place of birth. And the last point, fraternity means all Indians should live as a family and consider each one other, each other as brothers and sisters despite differences. And our last topic is guiding principles of the constitution. Our constitution is guided by the principles of equality, justice, and liberty. All laws in the constitution have been written keeping these values in mind. The value of equality is for making India a country where every Indian is equal. The value of justice gives all Indians the opportunity to benefit from the laws. The value of liberty gives all communities the right to live in harmony. Women enjoy the same rights as men. The constitution tells us what rights we have as citizens and the rules that we have to follow and the powers of the government. So this is the end of your chapter. So in the next video, I will come up with your textual questions and answers as well as fill in the blanks, unscramble the words and match the columns. Till then, take care.